All right, so this video probably should have come out about two, three, four weeks ago. I've been really busy. You know, if anybody saw my last video, you know that I'm basically moving my entire life from New Jersey to Virginia. I'm sorry that this video is so late, but I want to get something out there because, you know, it's not too late. It is time sensitive at this point, I would say. Anything I mention that is from a past video, I'm going to put a clickable link here that you could always um, reference back. I'm going to try to put the link in the information section of all the links that are mentioned and all the other things that you can reference back. Remember my videos, I like them to be not necessarily videos, but more like references. So I want you to be able to go and go, okay, mountain camp. I forgot about that. Go here, hit it, and it'll bring up that video. We're going to cover organizing the yard, feeding bees and getting the hives up to weight, the entrances, and then the next group of tasks, you know, down the road, you know, I would say phase two. So let's talk about organization first. And that, you know, should have been happening from like August, the end of summer, all the way down. Um, I would have mentioned this sooner. Again, my videos have been few and far between. So what I like to do come end of summer and when the flows are really like waning um, and they're just no longer that major flow that's at its peak and I start, ex I still extract. I just make sure that I get the hives all down to like maybe one super. Cause at that point I might have two, three supers on some of the hives. So I try to consolidate everything as I go. And then, you know, later on, if there were any fully capped frames, I would take those out and leave behind the uncapped frames and just consolidate all of your uncapped, you know, half filled frames into boxes and leave them out for now. Maybe they'll finish filling them up, you know, and then you can leave them as winter stores if you want to like emergencies. Hives. Another part of organizing your hives is not just the, the hives themselves. It's, it's the yard itself. And you may want to reduce the number of hives going into winter. Like it, maybe you made a decision. You're like, my God, the summer was crazy. Six hives was too much. Maybe I want to just cut it down to four or three. This is a time of year to combine. Fall combines are, that's, that's a, actually, not only is it okay to do it, it's a pretty common time to do it. So you can just combine hives just because you want less numbers. Uh, and you definitely, I really suggest combining weaker hives. I, a lot of people, I, I know as humans, we want to save something. It's kind of like human nature, like, oh, it's dying. Maybe I can try to help it along. In my opinion, you're, it's just always more beneficial to just kind of eat the loss up front. And then whatever that loss was is actually a gain for another hive or for you come spring. That would be your yard organization, combining, getting the hives all how you want them to get through winter. Right now, everybody should be going out and making sure their hives are heavy. You want them fed up to about 80 to 100 pounds. Keep in mind, everything I'm telling you is based on the Northeast New Jersey, you know, at grow zone 6B. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact. I think my first year of beekeeping, I went out there with a scale. I bought like a fishing scale and I'm like way in the hives. It, just get it close, get them heavy, get them like feeling like they're filled with rocks. And, and that's, that's a good indication that your hive has plenty of stores to get through winter. Moving forward to, to kind of get ahead a little bit so we don't get into the same situation. I don't want to make a video for phase two or the next step, you know, right when you should be doing it. So now I'm going to give you plenty of time to prepare. The next thing you want to do is your hive entrances and your mouse guards. You can absolutely put mouse guards on now if you want to. I, I don't, I usually wait till it gets even a little bit cooler. The only thing with mouse guards, if you wait a while and you put them on late, like I do, Make sure it's a day where the bees are flying. You don't want a situation where a mouse or a vole went in your hive and the bees are kind of like semi-clustered because it's, you know, a cold snap came through. And then the mouse kind of sets up camp in the corner of that box. And then you go and put a mouse guard on and now they can't get out. Now you just own that mouse until spring and it's going to just wreak havoc on your hive. It's going to make a mess. So just wait to a day when your bees are flying around, you know, it's from now all through autumn. It's not unlikely to get 60, 65 degree days. You know, this is the most pleasant time of the year. 
Just wait to a day when the bees are really active and then go out there and put your mouse guard on. Because when they're active, if there was a resident mouse or a vole in that hive, they're not gonna stick around when the active bees are buzzing all over and the bees are gonna chase them out of there. And if you remember back to one of my other videos, I use homosote covers for moisture control. I would start, I mean, you know, maybe gathering materials for that. Maybe go to the lumber yard, if you're gonna make your own, and buy the homosote boards. Maybe start cutting them up. I don't put those on now. I, um, I put those on when I do oxalic acid treatments in December. Mouse guards, I would say, I usually put those on sometime in November. Maybe, you know, maybe end of October, beginning of November. So I, I would get the mouse guards, depending on what the weather trend looks to be doing. If it looks like it's going to be like one of those Indian summers, then I hold off. Play that by ear. The homosote covers, the moisture covers that I use, start preparing them. You know, get them in your shop, get them ready. It's one less thing you have to do when it's time to actually put them on. Then December rolls around, and if you reference back to my video, I do another mite treatment, my cleanup round of oxalic acid. So that's usually the first, maybe second week of December. I used to do it around Thanksgiving, but it just seems like the, the, the fall is kind of stretching on more and more and more, and I want to make sure that that hive is brewed this before I do oxalic acid. So I bumped it back from Thanksgiving to like first week, sometimes second week of December. I'll do the oxalic acid treatment. While I'm out there, homosote covers go on. I may actually, sometimes I actually just put dry sugar up top via mountain camp method. Just because I'm already out there. And don't forget, if you go back to the mountain camp video, it also acts as moisture control. So you put that sugar in there, they may not need it to eat, but it's going to start absorbing that moisture. Like the dry sugar will turn into like a brick. Sugar and sugar and honey, both, they, they absorb moisture from the air. I forgot the term that's used for it, but like you leave a jar of honey out, it will actually pick up moisture and the moisture content will actually go up. Sugar is the same thing. It just, it absorbs moisture. So that's why I put the mountain camp on gratuitously and so early. And that, that's really it. I mean, you're not just going to say, okay, I did this task, December's done, and that's it. I'll see you in the spring. You're still going to go out and check on your hives throughout winter. You're not popping lids, but you are mostly heft testing your hives. So if, if you did all of these things and, you know, you treated your bees at the proper time and, you know, they're going into winter with mite-free, disease-free bees. You have them fed up. You're taking care of moisture control. Uh, you have your, your yards all situated. You cut your losses. I, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't have a pretty successful, uh, you know, winter. Um, you may lose a hive or two. It, it does happen. You're not, you're never going to, you know, it's rare to come out hundred percent success. I, I've had it happen. I, I don't count on it. You know, it's, it's, you're going to have losses, man. Count on 25% losses. I think that's like the average of people kind of report. I've been lucky the past few years and I'm not taking the credit for it. I'm going to say it's just luck. I, I think two, three years in a row, I didn't lose any highs. I lost the one to a bear attack. I don't count that. You know, that was just my own stupidity. So you, you should be able to make it out. And, and uh, once you get into the dead of winter, you start kind of getting your plan together for spring, how many hives you want, how you're going to manage your swarms. This winter, once I get settled in down in Virginia, I'm going to actually redo all of my videos. I, I, um, <laughs> I bought a new mic. I don't even know how it's going to sound. I haven't tested it or anything. I actually bought real mics, road mic. Those ceremonic mics, man, I was listening to some of my videos. I'm like, man, how are you guys tolerating that? It sounds like I'm underwater or something. So uh, I bought these Rode mics. They're like the real mic company. I remember when I was in my band days, it was always Rode microphones for sure, you know. So I got some better mics. So yeah, I'm going to be redoing all of my videos. Uh, I'll, I'll revisit them. I'm going to have an actual shop down there. I'm set up. I can go into more detail with physically doing stuff. And I'm going to be retired from my full-time gig because the bees and the farming is going to be my, my gig. So I'll have more time to really, um, you know, not neglect this channel. I, I, I've been saying that I want to push this channel forward. Um, I really, I, I love hearing from people. I love when people, uh, you know, reach out and ask a question. I think it's fantastic. It, you know, it makes me feel good, you know, and I always said that the channel's not, 
you know, like or subscribe driven, but I, I really do like seeing the, the subscribe count go up. Kind of feel good and, you know, feel somewhat useful and helpful. And uh, again, I, I always like to help people the way I was helped. It's hard. It's really hard to find somebody who's willing to just teach the bees and their goal is to get you to to be a good beekeeper. You know, a lot of people know what they're doing and they're just not great teachers or they're just more concerned with impressing you with their knowledge. I'm not here to impress you. I'm here to, you know, have you a successful winter and a very busy swarm season next year. That's my goal. You know, it's not for my ego or anything like that. So like, subscribe and comment, you know, or send me an email. If you want, if you don't want to comment, send an email and say, Hey, can you cover this? I, I'll, I'll cover it. And I don't, I don't care how frivolous you may think it is. It's, it's going to be useful information. And if it's not useful for somebody, they can just click onto the next video. So don't, don't be afraid. Don't think that it's a, you know, a dumb question or a dumb topic or, you know, frivolous. It's not. So it will be addressed. Thank you. I'll see you all next time.